Hello and welcome to Down the Slope. Uh, I'm Ewan. It's the first time you've heard from me this week. Uh, it's our what third episode of the week, and I am joined by Greg and Liam, um, both of who are getting prepared for a rather tasty game of seven aside, I believe, this week, uh, this evening. So we don't think we'll be with you too long. Um, Greg, this is the first time, obviously, me and you have been on. Liam done a great mm. job coordinating with some of the listeners. What a boy! Ten, Liam. Uh, very short notice on Tuesday. Um, mm-hmm. that's, that, that's no fanny about um, we're not going to talk about the game it's been long enough, I'm sure people have heard and formed their own opinions of that uh, already um, Sean Maloney was sacked um, we were we sat in a press conference with Ron Gordon yesterday mm-hmm. since Tuesday morning have has your thoughts on the sacking changed at all and what are they? I think they maybe have actually um, I think that Obviously, we're days late to the party, but for me, I think, yeah, the, the, more, the more I hear, obviously, you can't confirm a lot of the stuff that you hear, but mm. the more I hear, the more I think, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a good place. Um, he took us over in seventh. We've not really progressed. I think I think Ron Gordon's right. If we had seen any progression in terms of the football and the way that we play, that, then it would have been a different story, but ultimately, we've not. Mm. Um so I think in that sense it's probably changed. I think maybe a bit more time, but yeah, we obviously don't see what goes on day to day. These guys do, and, and they've made an informed decision based on that. And for me, the, the board sounded unanimous. So it sounds like that there was other stuff going on as well. But for me, we we need to we need to sort of sell it big time for the end of the season. Um, I think there was a worry even if we didn't admit it, that we were going to get dragged into the relegation battle because we hadn't, we haven't really been picking up many points. So, yeah, um, I don't know about you, but my opinion definitely has changed. So, for me, I think I was similar to you in the sense that on, it was Tuesday morning, wasn't it? Yeah, Tuesday morning. Yeah. Um, I initially was just shocked, you know, surprised. And I think yeah. your initial reaction is, what the fuck? And then... Yeah, you, you start to think things through. You break things down. You you start to hear the the noises coming coming from the club and stuff. And I, I was thinking about it this afternoon in the sense of, I've, so I've not renewed yet. I'm gonna, you know, it doesn't matter what yeah. happens. I'm mm-hmm. going to renew my season ticket. I've just not got round to yeah. doing it yet. But I'm thinking, do I have more or less confidence right now that this sort of summer rebuild that players we need in or who, are, who is going to come in to have more or less confidence in the fact that we're going to get it right now with or without Sean Maloney and whoever the new manager is and I would say that ultimately I think I'm very neutral on that like, yeah. and that probably says that maybe there was a confidence lacking there in Maloney from myself think, anyway, think, you know what I mean like the fact that he's gone and I'm not necessarily thinking I think yeah. we pretty much nailed it in the chat I think it was Sunday um, God bless Athletic Club. Um, Get on YouTube for more... a lovely, br- like, because the, the sunshine's just wandered into Liam's fucking bed. L- Liam has this aura about him that it's just glowing. Do you know this? Do you know this? One of the touches I love about this jersey is the wee back flag on the back mm. of the, the jersey. Yeah, uh, got on the, the way one to the season before as well. Quite enjoyable. You've got to have a certain. You've got to have a certain physique and colour about you to pull that off. The way I don't think it would quite look the same if I'm kicking about in that. Yeah, back, back on back, back on, on uh, track. Uh, important matters so we're not just bumming up uh, Liam's ego. Um, I think I think Liam was right on Sunday. Um, whether we like it or not, I think there was certainly an air of, of lack of confidence in terms of could Maloney get the summer rebuild right. Um, he came across as quite a quiet manager, um, not necessarily weak, but he just didn't really have that presence about him. Um, and I don't think he had that ruthless streak either that, that you kind of need at a club like Kibbs where you do need a rebuild. Um, so, yeah, I think that, look, if we're honest, we were worried mm. where it was going. I think we can come on the podcast and say, oh, manager needs time, but the, the performances and the results were worrying. Yeah, I think you've been biting your tongue the last few weeks after yeah, nailing your colours to the wind early doors saying you were never going to ask for me. Yeah, I'm, I mean, this is probably the first manager um, in a while that had been sacked without me wanting them sacked first. So, yeah. I think but let's, no, let's not be about the boost. Jack Ross should have been sacked anyway. It's just that uh, 
I, I don't, getting, I don't getting the new manager that. is. I don't disagree with that. There's no revisionism for me on Jack Ross whatsoever. I think I'm yeah. still struggling a wee bit with the Maloney one personally because I'm flipping and flipping. I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, I I just think every up. every manager needs to get a fair crack at the whip and to to be able to do. And I know that maybe they're saying they didn't see improvements in some of the players and some of the playing squad, and I, I can understand some of that. But what I have difficulty with is. He was given a January transfer window, which we know is incredibly difficult to attract players of quality yeah. to the club. Some of the players that Ron Gordon quoted as quality signings the other day to me weren't, uh, sorry, yesterday, were not yeah. quality signings. So Rocky Bashiri, straight off the bat, I'm just going to say it yeah. now. I don't Rock write players quality. off, but he's not He's not so far shown that he's a quality signing. Henderson shown bits and flashes. Jasper, bits and flashes. Melkerson, one game. Like, you know, so you're, you're talking about a window that's really difficult and we've not even given him the opportunity just playing those final five games of the season we could have gone into this, the split the second half split and won all five games and perspectives would change massively we're not going to go down this season I'm just going to say it we're not going to go down this season we could also go on in that split in the morning and not won any of the five games in which case I think a lot of people's mind would have been made up anyway already the reason I think it's a bit of a PR not a bad move, but it's not maybe worked out the way the club thought it would or people, how people respond to it is because people just don't think that he's been given the relevant period of time to make yep. it work. I, I'm definitely, I'm struggling to really nail my mask to what the wind on, on either side of whether it is or isn't the right thing. What are you, what are you struggling to I do? Know. You're Sorry, struggling, I you're, you're struggling to say it. <laughs> you're coming to the mask. I just, I don't know what, I don't, there's one part of me that's like the club made a big deal about the appointment and it's like we joke about it in that but like don't bat down double down they they kind of had the opportunity with Maloney to to almost do that to back their original decision and give them the the funds and the backing in the summer to see how it goes but then there's also this other side of me that's like they've effectively they're trying to are they just trying to set a precedent of its results over anything else. But then, obviously, when Ron Gordon's on his all his media stuff yesterday, he cites sort of abnormal level of injuries. Abnormal level, whether we agree or disagree with the quality of player that came in. I don't think anyone, including ourselves, actually expected us to bring in the volume of players that we did in January. We thought we were going to just have to sort of get by to this to, to where we are now in terms of looking towards the summer. So, like, when you're citing all these reasons, that it almost negates the fact that they sound like things you would say for not sacking a manager. You know, like we yeah. lost Martin Boyle. We we've signed seven or eight players, so we need to give them time to to settle in. And it takes more than cause some of them came in late in the window as well. You know, like it's obviously a few a good few of them came in early. Harry Clark got injured straight away. The Nisbet injury, all that. Like it seems a strange decision to me. I, I, I think. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm really, really struggling to really make my mind up if I agree or disagree with it. I can totally see. I, I don't. I, I'm really, really fucking struggling with this. We one. could just take the next half an hour and you can maybe Mate, just, yeah, just, all your just thoughts. Just, just, by the end just, of just keep hour, talking. Maybe you'll it out. Just, maybe just, just keep. If you two want to just keep talking, then at the end I'll just say, "Oh, and by the way, um, just, just you talk through your your mindset at the moment, Mister." <laughs> I just, I'm wait. really, I'm just, and but I. Do you think that's probably the general mindset of the most Hibs fans just now? We're just really unsure. Like, yeah. well, the polls were the poll results I saw that were came out, and admittedly I've not gone back to them since yesterday, but they were very 50-50 in terms of whether it was the right thing or the wrong thing. I did see that one of those polls had maybe changed in favour on the basis of Ron Gordon's interview yesterday, that maybe more people favoured the decision for him to go. I don't know if that necessarily influences just how people think. You know, him do front up to the the, the media and, and obviously speaking to us and fan media and giving us the opportunity to ask questions. I thought that level of transparency from the club was great and I think they should be commended for that. But there were quite a lot of his answers that we weren't satisfied with and I would just like to put on record the way that the, the, the conversation worked is you were given an opportunity to ask a question, you weren't then given an opportunity to ask a question in response to his answer. Yeah. Um, because I think there were some answers that if I'd had the opportunity to chime in, I probably would want to have asked a question supplementary question understand what he was talking about yeah I think um, I think the, the one for me that was a quality signings um, I don't agree at all to be honest I, don't, I just don't think that 
we've made the quality signings like Jasper, Sean, Sean Glimstead, Melkerson, but yeah, Rocky, Rocky Basuri is not the answer. Um, so I just, I, I don't know. I, I just don't think that the recruitment's been there. Whether he's defending his son or whatever, I, I don't know. But I just really don't don't believe that the signings we made were, were quality enough that they would fit in any Hibs team. Um, and we would want them next season here. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like we were, uh, I say, if, you, if, if any of the listeners are listening to this and haven't managed to catch the press conferences, go and listen to our release of it, Longbanger, Strong Ops, uh, Hibs Talk, whoever. Hibs but talk. Um, Gav from Hibs Talk Pod asked a really, really good question at the end that yep. I have to say um, I wouldn't have. Um, good question. And it wasn't just the question it was how he put it as well it was yeah. fucking bang on the money like very good question and it, it it's something I've been thinking about the last couple of days about Ian Gordon and Ben Kensel and I, it's almost a discussion point for us I'm almost beginning and I, I've been feeling this way probably since the build up to the league derby I'm feeling mm. almost like Ben Kensel lied to our faces He's like sitting telling us how the club had had a seven out of ten window. We we expect to finish third, ladder, ladder, ladder. And then Sean Maloney's telling us in the outset of the derby that we we had a poor window. You know, we didn't get things done in the so how how can we be how can the club general and I wouldn't say, and I'd say that's the first time Sean Maloney had highlighted that as well. Mm. Like where where do hey, um, Ian Gordon and Ben Kensel rank on this? And and what do they was- he was offended when I said I thought the window was three out of ten. And to be honest, I think three out of ten's been generous. Um I, I I don't know how he measures a good window. Like it's all very well doing it at clubs like Norwich where you're not that big a football club, but at Hibernian there's there's a big you know, you're a, you're a big club. Um there's big expectations and the fans expect you in that position to get things spot on. And if you don't get it spot on the first time, you learn from that. Look, Norwich and Hibs are totally different. Hibs have an air of expectation about succeeding. Norwich have an air of expectation about being stuck in between two football leagues. So for me, I don't know if this is too big a job for them, but the summer window, like the other seven windows we've just had, become massive. And he needs to get it right. And if he doesn't get it right, then ultimately he's he's for the chop. Well, like Math, he got the chop for his windows not being good. And to be honest, Ian Gordon would also be in the firing line as well. Yeah. Liam, you've probably been the most um, concerned, Local? shall we say. <laughs> yeah, around, around Ben Kensel. Uh, sort of since the day he came in, in terms of slagging off previous regimes, almost shying away from any responsibility for the summer one, even though he sort of came in at least some time of it still to go um, hmm. what do you make of the fact we've not heard from our CEO I know obviously Ronald Gordon's the owner and chairman but like you would expect to have heard something from that as well no? I thought it was very very interesting that it was Ron Gordon that was put in front of the media yesterday um, especially because I, he's not really been seen a huge amount. If you remember the week that we interviewed Ben, which was way back in February, he did the thing with Hibs TV where he did the sit down on YouTube. Mm. And that was like him kind of doing his like latest update to the fans. Things weren't going very well on yeah. pitch at that point either. So that was him kind of fit position himself as I'm the figurehead now. Things kind of hit the wall a little bit and then Ron Gordon starts to assert control again. So I don't know if there's maybe been a bit of a jockeying for position in the channels of power at Hibs and, and maybe Ron's taken a bit more of an active interest because of how things have been over the last few well I think he seems like a really hands-on owner anyway to be honest so yeah. I don't think it's like he's been sleeping at the wheel or anything like that but I think he probably sensed that the question would come up about Ian Gordon yesterday and I think he wanted to be the one that responded and answered that question rather than mm-hmm. Ben would be what I would take from it I yeah. thought and this isn't revisionism on our part at all, because I think I said this at the time, hopefully I'm on record that saying it, but I thought the dynamic when Ian and Ben were talking to us that night was really interesting, because Ben was really open and really transparent, and he was brilliant with us. Like, I'm, I'm not going to um, you know, change, change my mind on that. But I did think it was very interesting that Ian Gordon was kind of brought in pretty last minute to essentially have a conversation with us about transfers, and the positioning of that was very interesting. And Ron 
seem to want to dumb down Ian's role a wee bit yesterday, saying it's just about doing better yeah. background checks. It's like, fuck off. That's not what head of recruitment does. Head of recruitment. And he also made the, the, the statement where he said he's one of a team of six in the recruitment team. Yeah. But his title is head of recruitment. Yeah, Sean he, Maloney's title is head coach and Sean Maloney lost his role for being head of that team so you can't yeah. use the comparison for head of recruitment and say he's on you know he he's not fully responsible because there's a team of six but not apply that same logic to head coach because otherwise you'd maybe sack Caldwell you'd have sacked Valerio yeah. Zuda you'd have sacked that Brian Kevin Dugan Maloney, yeah. you'd, have maybe, you'd have maybe fucking sacked David Gray God forbid do you know what I mean but this is the thing that the, this thing with Ron Gordon is like it, for, for me, the Ian Gordon thing is now becoming more of an issue because mm. he's trying to dumb it down and make it not an issue. It came in See, in the back door as well, out. didn't it? As well, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah, almost exactly. like it's almost like one size does not fit all. It was released through some cock up in terms of a staff list or yeah. something, but I think, or you know, something happened and it, was it on the website or something? I want to say someone on yeah. Twitter, so I. Was, managed to see it on a staff list or a contact list or something on the Hibs website and then it disappeared for a couple of months and then it came yeah. back like it, it uh, there was never any and for me so if you look at it, Graham Maffey was sporting something I think Kensal and my understanding of it Kensal and Gordon have effectively taken that and Maffey's entire role and have split it between the two of them yeah. But it's all was my way of thinking of it potentially before yesterday's press conference. The mm-hmm. the 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 answer that was given to that question yesterday suggests that what well, he he just sort of coordinates the team of scouts or recruitment, like people maybe people like Calvin Charlton, and he just sort of sits above them and coordinates the team. I I I, I never got that impression before yesterday. Yeah, I, I, I mean. Uh... Who knows what's going on at that club at the moment? Um, fair play to Ron Gordon for coming out and speaking, but I, I don't know. I think I think it left a few with more, more answers than questions, uh, more questions than answers. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I quote tweeted Valerio Zudas's tweet on Saturday night <laughs> saying, "What the fuck is this?" Because he said, "There's a language there barrier been- there, mate." We, 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 no, but there isn't. Um, we, I think was that we got beat, but we can, but we can be proud. Like no, we can't. That's not. That's not how things work. Yeah. Um, I think I, I don't know if they understood the intensity, but for me, Sean Maloney and Gary Caldwell have been in Scottish football for a while. They should understand that. I don't think they did though. I don't yeah. think they got it. It's interesting as well. I mean, I, I know we don't want to touch on the touch on the. Um, the game too much like uh, it feels like very old news at this point um but does the second on like there was a bit of a again a 50 50 split after the game like some it, it was the minimums you know it's a scottish cup semi-final there's professional pride there and stuff you know the players were fighting you know like as i didn't really click on to the game but neutrals and hearts fans that i spoke to after the game they said that hibs really did just kick out kick carts up and down the pitch. And oh, there was a bit of fight is what you do. You see the outrage at Man United not doing that to Liverpool on Tuesday night and then the young boy came on and being praised for it. It's, it is, as Greg says, bare minimum stuff. The fact that the club have then sat Maloney on the back of that suggests that the club are aware of that and that they just shown some passion and pride maybe isn't enough. And that was the one thing that well, maybe did not. come across for me from Ron Gordon yesterday was that he is quite ruthless. And the expectation is ultimately going to be Top four, relative cup success. I would say, I would say, except we like to think of ourselves as one of the top five clubs in the country, right? So I'd assume really the minimum expectation should be semi-finals of cups. If you, I know it never works out that plain and simple, but in theory, there's not many teams that we would accept losing to home or away in a cup competition. So I'm assuming the baseline is that you get well, to I mean, the final I, four of cups and you top four I, of the league and. Maybe that I get the decision. What do you make of the fact that we now have David Gray and Eddie May for five weeks for the last five games? Can I just, can I just, can I just Sorry, yeah, yeah. Pride, pride and passion is bare minimum. I, I, honestly, like, well done, you put effort in. Fantastic. That, that's literally like entry level behavior. So 
I really don't care about effort. Efforts, nothing. If I mean, you don't get points for putting a shift in, do you? you know, Liam could run about all night and, and no make a do, pass, but I do run about all night. <laughs> but, but he's run about all night. So what does that mean? Does he have the three points because he's covered so much distance? Well, I'm honest, you know, you, you need you need that ability, um, and and saying that Hibs are a, a top six level club with top six level players, would have to slightly disagree with him on that as well. Um, so yeah, I, I just think the ruthlessness point is an interesting one, Ewan. If Because if he's truly ruthless, if we have a bad summer transfer window, heads have to roll. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't you can't say that he's ruthless, but he doesn't address the people who are responsible for. Yeah. In my eyes, recruitment has been the biggest issue this season. Like we can talk about head coaches, we can talk about managers, but we have not added quality players to the starting eleven. We are still relying on. The same guys that got us through for the last few years. We're still relying on Lewis Stevenson was the best player in the park on Saturday. Did Ron yep. Gordon sign Lewis Stevenson? Chris yep. Cadden was probably the next best player. You know, you maybe make an argument for Henderson. Mm-hmm. Those those guys have come in during, 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 during his tenure, but they weren't signed by uh, Ian Gordon. No. There was, there was one. Henderson was Sean Maloney signing, and Chris Cadden was a signing that Graham Mafia identified. So... You have, to, you have to look at it and say, if we're not improving on based on what we've got, it's all very well. You tell us that you think the players are quality, but they have yeah. to they have to be showing it on the football pitch. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know how to labour that point anymore, but, but I just I just think that we're in real danger here of like just going through sacking head coach after head coach, but not addressing what the actual issue is. If there's people at the club who are ma- making decisions on enough. players... They're just not, they're not into it. They're not into it. We've missed out on targets as well. as players we should have signed that we didn't sign. We have let other players go to clubs in this league who we should have shown an interest in, in my, in my opinion, who would have improved us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, aye. And like you say, Graham Matthew got sacked, what, September, October time? And that was ultimately, yeah. that was ultimately, well, we felt like uh, he got the blame for what was the, the poor summer yeah. window and the, Start of a bad run of form, wasn't it? And then obviously see, Jack Austin fell on that sword. So who knows? See what if, um, if Ron Gordon is ruthless, then see if his son doesn't produce the goods in the summer, then he's got to go as well. Then if he's that ruthless, mm-hmm. um, and ultimately, if the recruitment's not good enough, he is head of recruitment, regardless how many folk he speaks to in the canteen about signings. If if he's not given, if he's not identifying good enough signings and. <laughs> He's got to go. So I don't know. <laughs> he's got to go. Like yeah, honestly, I'd... he sits on a committee, as he called it. Fucking, he's literally head of recruitment. Like there is no committee to head of recruitment. You yeah, are so he, head if, of recruitment. If, I get every stops for you. If, am I right in saying if we sort of go back to, with if we take all the stuff we've learned from our chats with the club and yesterday as well, you've got a recruitment team. Gordon then represents said recruitment team on the final sort of committee, which is yeah. Gordon, Gordon, Kensal, and the soon Some to be appointed the board, head coach. I would imagine, I would imagine the finance director has yeah. a say in it as well in terms of what we can and can't spend. But that, that, and that's, that, that's, that's an interesting Greg's touched on something interesting there because I wonder um, the recruitment team when they're meeting in the, not the recruitment team, the transfer committee when they're meeting up in the canteen, what do you think they have to bacon rolls? Bacon rolls in the morning, just sitting and have a wee blather over the bacon rolls and say that there'll be any bacon. There are cornflakes and toast sort of people, oh. I think. Fucking get them out, get them out. <laughs> cornflakes, cornflakes are unacceptable. Toast, uh, <laughs> unacceptable. Uh, Right, I right. Mean, I, as I much just, as it, honestly, I right, you still have got fives to get to. We've got shit to talk about that isn't the cornflakes. <laughs> um, right. David Gray and Eddie May back in charge. Um, five games to the end of the season. What do you make of the fact that the club have made it clear that they're going to take their time to appoint this? And I just want to address it. Now, people are saying there's rumours kicking about that Malky Mackay was at HTC last night. Now, look, I could end up with egg on my face here, right? But he was in the Highlands yesterday getting a press conference, uh, being interviewed at the Sandy Ross, Sandy Ross County's pitch. I highly doubt he drives to Dingwall and back each day. So the fact he lives in Edinburgh is really know that bigger deal than that. Ron Gordon said that if any they never really had a list and they're going to take their time to find the the, the replacement and he's leaving in the fucking country. 
when he's got five weeks, um, when he's given himself five to six weeks to make a decision, I'd imagine he's probably going to fly over to interview folk face to face. Like, first of all, St. Mirren must be sick of caretaker managers at Hibernian. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think they say they had a list, but they've always got a list, apparently. Um, I don't know how, how much I believe that. Um, but look, apparently, Malcolm McKay lives in Belerno. I don't, you know, Fuck. we all know like, your I, I, I don't know, I don't know how, well, I, I don't know how true that is. You can't travel from Belerno to Dingwall every day, like, Jesus. No the price diesel is at the moment. I was going to say, he must be on are. some salary up at Ross County um, who's driving to him from every day. And I'll tell you what, if, 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 if Hibs read Hibs Twitter, then Malcolm McKay is not an option, ultimately. No. Um, because I think I think the club would lose a lot of support if, if he was to become the manager. Like he, he's, he's against everything that like, even the three of us, our values, they don't, they don't match ours. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't... I think we can that's not comfortably option, throw Harry into that mix as, as well. Com, as a commercial yeah. decision, it's not a good decision as well. Ron Gordon made it clear from the interview yesterday his number one focus is revenue growth. That would see season tickets handed back. Whether or not you agree with it on the basis of principle, I, I, I think at that point is... is it, of course, it's important, the principles are important, but it's not the thing that's going to be the overriding part of the decision. The decision is a commercial yeah. one. People would just vote with their feet Yep. So correct. Yeah, I, I don't see that one happening. To be honest, um, Kevin Thompson would be the exact same for different reasons. Um, I don't think I'd be back at Easter Road while he was there. Um, wait, wait, where, so, yeah. where are you both looking? I mean, Ron Gordon's. Then the I've not listened to any of the stuff he's done that wasn't obviously with all the podcasts. I've not had the chance uh, yet, but. In terms of the articles and stuff that have come out, they suggest that we're going to go down a much more experienced route. I got the impre- I yeah. didn't necessarily get that impression when we spoke to him. I think, maybe, yeah, he might go for a little bit more. I'm not expecting us to appoint a seven year old. You know, like, you know, like, I'm not. Put it this way. Put it this way. Someone said Tommy Wright today. It will not be Tommy Wright either. <laughs> like, where, where do you again, think we're going to go with again, this? Again, principle values does not fit. Where do you think we're going to go with this? Because we do have a, a, a skeleton of a squad that is Roy apparently Keane. capable of wanting to play a decent brand of football, and that's the demands of the club. Now, you can I don't I don't think you have to have an inexperienced manager to be able to play attacking football. You know, I don't think well, they have to go. Um, I, I, I think we've got. got a, I think we've got a Norwegian football expert just joining the podcast just now to tell us who he thinks we're going to get. Uh, Rain, reindeer no. over to you, pal. <laughs> uh, he he has he has shown his reindeer hot dogs at the pram, um, and it's no longer a Hibernian football fan uh, because he took he took something a little bit too literally. Um, mm-hmm. So you see, for me, if I took an and they just take the Granada job, I'd be looking at that sort of level. Um, I think we need to be ambitious. I don't think there's a there's an issue with going after people like that. Um, I think. People have seen Scott Brown, like the only way Scott Brown will be at Hibs as if it's part of the coaching team. I don't think he'll be manager. Yeah, I was a main um, that I mentioned to you in work the other day. And yeah. what I said was, off the top Hope of my we'll head, that it. was the only name I felt everyone would get behind. But I don't see any way that it happens, mm. nor would it be a choice for me, given the fact yeah. what we've just had for the last four months. I mentioned, I mentioned John Doolan um, to yourself. Um, just purely by the way that he is with the club, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I should go down that route either. Um, I think all roads lead to keen or nuts, and for me, like <laughs> all roads lead to nuts. And, <laughs> oh, oh, the, see the joy I would get. If see, see, right, right, okay, fucking see. never going to happen. I know. Oh, Liam, if he was ever, a, see if any time in his career he becomes hips babs, surely you get. A free season ticket for the the rest of the your life or sad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And that <laughs> strange things have happened in football. St- yeah. Genuinely, stranger things have happened in football. I think he's on record saying he wants to manage a Champions League level. You know, take us there. Take us there then. Aye. What is the... two spots available in Scotland? It's one more than Norway. So what what are the most ridiculous shouts that we've heard and which one if, you could, right. if you could commit no but no no but if you had to commit your full want to one of the ridiculous shouts so i think when i say ridiculous i mean just really really it would be high end you know like in terms of 
like so we've seen people Sean Dyche Ollie Goodish Olsha Sean Dyche your your boy Nutson <laughs> Daniel Farka uh, John Dowd Thompson Thomas Thomason I, um, I don't like, think he's out of the realms of possibility I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's that's too bad to be honest I don't think Thomas is bad I can't remember why he left is Rangers, he but I tell you what, he had he had Rangers an absolute toast that night. He um, he, he, he got sacked well. for the Malmo job. Did he? I'm Did pretty he? sure. I, I so he, he, won. He, he won two. He won. He won two league titles. I don't know if he sacked or if he left. I'm 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 in danger of giving you the wrong stats here. He he, he struggled uh, early on in his career in, yeah. in Holland, and I think he went to be assistant at Denmark for a few mm. years. And then mm-hmm. took the Malmo job off the back of that, and obviously did a really good job at Malmo. He won the title in his first season, um, and I think, I think he maybe he got money. to the Champions League group stages yes, after beating Rangers, did they? Yeah. And then they won another title. So maybe, maybe I'm making up. Maybe he wasn't sacked. Maybe I he think they need the money, that. don't you? I, I, I think yeah. I think he left um, off his own accord. That could be He's a fucking class. What I would ah, ask then is, is, what I would is, ask is, I think is it, if money. someone that's I think leaving, need that. if he's leaving a club that he's won the league twice with, he's played in the Champions League. I'm just thinking from a mindset point of view. She, is she it realistic be, like, to she, think he's going to want to manage a ultimately failing she, Scottish she, she football club me. right now? After after hearing what Ron Gordon suggested, it seems like everything's in place. But the football side. So if all the infrastructure in place, so you're yeah. looking for as a manager to take us to that next level. Now, Hibs is still an attractive job, an attractive city, area, whatever. I think I think some of we bit ambition would like to take a job like Hibs and try and split the old firm and look you know, if they back themselves, then good on them. But I still think it's an attractive job to be honest. Thomason left of his own accord. I need to just correct myself before someone fucking hammers me for saying, for getting that wrong. I, I <laughs> tried to translate an article from Swedish and English and I got all mucked up. And it turns out he just, he left after two years. He was like, I've done all I can do here. See you later. Fair enough. Fair enough. Get him in. Get him in. Yeah. I, and if not, there's no available, get him in. I need to get him <laughs> I, 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 think, I, think the, I think the club will be ambitious, to be honest. I think... Why not? Why not push the boy and try and I get guess someone in? Uh, well, I mean, I guess there's an argument to say that Maloney was ambitious. You know, you managed to prize him away from another, like, I think mm. they are uh, one of the best teams in the world, even though they generally fail on the big, big mm. stage. Um, look, there's a game on Saturday, which has snuck up on us. I know that Nabdi really gives a flying fuck about. Um, but maybe David Correct. Gray, but maybe David Gray gives a fuck. About it, um, he uh, said I back will, in uh, December. As long as he's on the phone to Jack Ross again, we'll be all right. <laughs> um, I what, what 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 do we what do we need to see from that eleven players? I guess a little bit of fight, a little bit of desire, like they showed, and and ultimately go out there and get three points because I know I think we're all of the opinion of what Liam said earlier that we won't get relegated, but I think we definitely need at least one win in the five to be entirely comfortable. Um, I'd, I'd like to see above bare minimum mm-hmm. for a change. Sometimes we would hit bare minimum, but we hit bare minimum last weekend. Um, so it'd be good to see us go one step further and actually put a bit of ability in the performance as well. I'd like to see some goals. I'd just like to see us fucking take the hand back off a wee bit as the, the cliche goes and have a, have a bit of a go at St Mirren. We're away from home. I don't really think there's anything to lose, to be honest. I think we just need to go out there and, and, and score some goals and get people get people excited about coming to watch Hibs again next season. Am I, um, am I right in saying that the season we got relegated we played St Mirren the first game of the split and Kenny McLean scored after about five seconds? Uh, that sounds... Uh, that game uh, did happen. Like uh, that game did happen. Yep. Um, Michael Nelson, great defender. Yeah. Big yeah. shot, yeah. man. So, um. so, so <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I forgot... I, just be adventurous, you know. Try to take risks. Don't just play right. simple, safe shite that we play every week. I mean, let's be honest, but anyone can pass the ball a triangle. Let's try and spread the play, though. It, it's be one of them, isn't it? Like, a wee bit more ambition for the midfield would be good. You see it all the time, um, teams start playing when that. would also be good. 
But you see it kind of regularly. Teams will be three, four down, and then they'll mount a half hour's comeback, maybe two goals, because the pressure's off a little bit. The game's gone. Like we should be in a position where we go into these games expecting to win. I think we are the best team in the bottom six. You know, but I know our form is atrocious, but we've addressed that, I guess, by getting rid of the manager. They should see it as a fresh group of five games. And, yeah, I think it's important that they, they go and set... They just need to get fans engaged again as well, don't they? I know, and like because there is a massive, massive sideshow right now to the actual football surround, yeah, and that we're, we're going to have until the summer now. And... For people to actually be interested, they need to they need to be performing and performing well, you know. To sell season tickets, you need to address the apathy that exists within the support. And I think the only real way to do that is by well, there's a couple of ways. One is by appointing a appointing a manager and making some signings, and then the other one is by doing some stuff on the park between now and the end of the season. And I know it's only five games against teams in the bottom six, but to be honest, all those other teams in the bottom six are going to be fighting. Even Aberdeen are still potentially in relegation trouble they're, they're, you know, so these teams are going to be going to be probably potentially more up for those games than we are so we're going to need to find some motivation and hopefully David Gray can yep. instill that in them and we can, we can get at least a few wins yeah. the end just the turn the heating off be alright <laughs> <laughs> right eat. score predictions for some men away well, just, if we play two up top I think we'll win I think we'll win 2-0 um, if we don't play two up top it'll be nil nil. Liam? I'm going to go for David Gray's favourite scoreline, 3 2. I'm going for 1 1. I don't think. I think St. Mirren have got a lot more to play for than us and everything in the. Um, everything that's went on this week, I can't imagine it's the player, you know, they, they'll have had Maloney take them on Monday, most likely. David Gray take them on Tuesday, day off on Wednesday, because I've seen Harry Clark and James Scott were. Uh, on the golf course, so I, I think, I think one one, um, and yeah, I just don't think I don't I, as much as I want it. I don't think we're going to see anything exciting between now and the end of the season. I really, really don't. Like, it's just such a, it's such a grim way to, to end this podcast. On, I see but... Connor Ronan play the way. We treat for the fans. Nah, well, that doesn't even matter, does it? Because we got a head shake when we suggested him back in February. <laughs> um, Did we get a head shake? Well, I thought like we got annoyed. No. I, I, I think they sort of shied away from it, almost like, yeah, we are looking at him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would be silly not to look at him. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, for me, I think we should be in the recruitment team, but there we go. I think it should be. Well, call, uh, call, me and Colin are writing a list about the wrong order on the basis of his question yesterday. We've started, we've worked up a list of uh, players at the club currently that we're no impressed with and I think we're going to add some, I've not spoken to Colin about this yet, but I think we're going to add some names in there. Maybe we'll take a wee look at this guy, Ron. Maybe. <laughs> right. We will be back next week. We've had three episodes this week. We, uh, Mr. Fogger, you must be podcasted. Um, but yes, enjoy yourselves tonight. As long as he runs about the night, you'll go, be I was right. going to say, go, go and kick seven lumps of shite at each other in, uh, in the sun. And aye, we'll catch you next week. Hopefully, we've got more to talk about next week in terms of potential managers and hopefully a fucking win. Cheers. Yeah, go God ahead. bless.